What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the dedicated Nintendo Switch arcade cabinet based off of a Konami arcade cabinet. I present to you the Super Mario Sticker Bombed arcade cabinet. There's a lot of words. <laughs> You guys know the drill because I'm always going to be saying it, just like my catchphrase. If you're not following me on Instagram, what the hell are you doing? Follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you did follow me, you would have seen this entire cabinet built from the ground up. This one is just very special. I mean, all my arcades are special, but this one particularly is, it's just, it's just super special because this is my first ever arcade cabinet cut with my CNC machine. And honestly, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I, I was expecting a lot of challenges, like I was with George's V-Pin. That was my first ever cut cabinet with my CNC machine. Now that I kind of learned my CNC machine, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. It is not perfect. I don't think it, it'll ever be perfect compared to like a $20,000 CNC machine. But for what I paid for that CNC machine and for what it made, I can make this happen. It, it'll, it'll work out. Now there's a lot of wording, if you've been following me on Instagram and even on the Facebook group posts and all that, you would have definitely seen like this huge title that I have on it. Even on my live stream, I did put on my live stream. Um, that's another thing I'm going to be talking about later on is because I'm excited for that. Um, a lot of people though that just saw the promo video, they're like, Vic, why are there so many like words to this title? Why is it called the Super Mario Sticker Bomb Konami Style Nintendo Switch Cabinet? Like, yes, that is a mouthful, I get it. There's just so much going on on this. Um, I don't know, really know how to break it down, but we're gonna go slow. Before I break it down, I'm actually gonna be moving this right now to that side, closer to my streaming station. I'm gonna bring the camera back just to show you guys my little, you know, basement game room battle station area because this is one of the three cabinets I do have in the making. Um, so let me take you back and I'll show you a little bit of the actual game room that I got going on here. So as of right now, you kind of see my basement. It's kind of a two section area, pretty nice. It's, it's open concept, but this right here is really gonna be dedicated for games. Um, as you do see right now, I have my three main components, the Nintendo Switch cabinet, I got my virtual pinball machines, and I do have my Mega Touch there. Um, like I said, there are three more cabinets in the making. You'll just have to stay tuned for that. Two of them are gonna be very unique, um, really personal builds. The next one, which I'm actually gonna get the wood for tomorrow, is gonna be a dedicated Neo Geo cabinet. Um, kind of like what I do with this Konami cabinet, I'll just, I'll tell you all the details about it, but just kind of give you an outline that this space is gonna be filled. Also though, this cabinet is not gonna stay here as of right now. I'll show you what's pretty cool with this build, but right now this cabinet is not gonna stay here because I'm gonna be using this to stream with my stream ideas, and I'll tell you in the video. So I have to move this cabinet actually across the room. So this cabinet's not gonna really be right here where I'm taking this video. It's actually gonna be closer to my desk, but I am putting it here because I will show you guys artwork. I'll go in depth on the artwork, but just to kind of show you one big feature compared to all my other cabinets is that this thing is on casters. So I can move this around anywhere I want. That's honestly the coolest part with it. And again, luckily with this running a Nintendo Switch, all I've got to do is turn the TV on because the Switch is already on. So rebooting this is fairly easy. Let me bring you guys closer. So real quick, let me tell you the purpose of this cabinet because I feel like you need to know that to understand a lot of the other stuff. So let's start with that. Let's start with the first purpose of this. So this is a dedicated Nintendo Switch arcade cabinet. The reason why I built this, number one, was to test my CNC machine. I am branching away and I'm trying to do all of this on my own. I'm trying not to rely on game room solutions like I've done in the past. Again, in this video, I'm going to go a lot in depth talking about artwork and all that and all the features and all that. So that's why I built this cabinet. Number one was really to test my CNC machine. Number two is that I do have a stream idea that not many people are doing it. I, I am a gamer. I've been gaming. I'm, I'm born in the 90s. The NES was my first system. I always loved gaming because if I didn't like gaming, I wouldn't be doing anything arcade related and all that. So 
Number one, definitely I am a gamer at heart, so at night, I play my games. I play video games and I said to myself, I said, you know what? Let me just hop on these streams. Let me, let me just make a stream. Whether I become popular or not, that's not the point of it. I just want to play. Whether some people want to watch me or not, I'll just play. Honestly, when Mario Odyssey first came out on the Switch, I streamed that. Had no viewers, maybe like one or two. But it was just kind of something where like, I just wanted to have fun with it and, and I have my whole battle station, so why the hell not, right? So that's part of the other reason why I built this cabinet is because I am going to use this to stream. Now you might be saying, Vic, what are you going to stream? I have this theory that not many people do it alongside with my hyperspin builds. Um, basically, I do have a lot of customers that want dedicated arcade cabinets, but their big question is, hey Vic, does this game work with arcade sticks? So here's the idea on the stream. I will be playing Switch games and I will be playing PC games, basically taking these modern games and trying to see if number one, can you play them on the arcade sticks? And number two, is it enjoyable in an arcade atmosphere. So that's the idea I have. It might sound stupid, but I do have a lot of people that ask me for dedicated cabinets, but then they do also ask me if that game is able to play on arcade sticks. So for example, just to throw one out there, I did have a Super Smash Brothers dedicated cabinet request. I did let the customer know because I did see on Retro Ralph about a year ago, he had somebody that did a Super Smash Brothers cabinet and it didn't work with his arcade sticks. And I felt so bad because like, oh crap, he made a dedicated, he changed the arcade one up, he changed the artwork to Super Smash Brothers, and then turned out that his arcade sticks couldn't even play it. So I was like, oh, this is a good idea. Why not just, you know, get modern games and test it? You never know, some people might make dedicated cabinets out of it. So that's my stream idea. It might sound dumb to some people, but I think it's pretty cool, especially when new fighters come out. People do want to see, does it play on arcade sticks? Is it great? A lot, now you have like the Legends Gamer Pro, which I do have there. I'll be using that for the PC side of it. You know, they are making decks and I figure it's a good way for people to see if the game is actually playable on arcade sticks. Call me crazy, but that is what the stream idea is. And then it's also to chill and chat with you guys while we game and all that. So again, built this cabinet. Basically, I wanted to test my CNC out. I want to make sure that it could cut the cabinet. And number two, I think it's a good segue to bring in the whole streaming idea that I have. Whether it's dumb or not, and I did say it in a live stream test that I did about two or three weeks ago. No, two weeks ago. Uh, I said, listen, I'm going to do it. Whether some people would join me or not, I'm going to do it. Maybe you'll watch it the next day. I figure it's a cool way to kill time and hang out because me personally, while I'm building cabinets, I actually throw up random YouTube streams. Um, you know, whether it's Dr. Disrespect or Tim the Tatman or even uh, TNT Amusements, just to hear him talk while working. Who knows, maybe you'll just listen to me while you're working. So I figure why not, let me join in on the stream gang. So that honestly was another idea out of it. So testing out the CNC machine and also branching out into streams because who knows, it'll start out with me streaming the Switch and then, I don't know, we'll probably do what a Beat Kong does and get features and all that, I don't know. But definitely that was the main purpose, CNC testing and my stream idea. Another thing also, I did have the Switch. I do have a modded Switch. I'll be discussing everything because people will be asking a bunch of questions. I do have my Switch. It's on my desk. It looks ugly, all the wires are there, and I rarely play it in my hand. I always play it kind of on a bigger screen. And I figured, hey, why not? I'll play this because also, with it being streamed, I don't have to actually be here. I could always use my monitor because it'll stream. I'll show you the whole stream setup and all that. So there you guys have it. That is why I built this cabinet. Now a lot of people are going, hey Vic, why do you keep emphasizing that it's a Konami cabinet? I don't understand why do you keep emphasizing it? So again, testing out the CNC machine, I do want to design my own cabs, but I figured, you know what, let me take an existing design that we all know that works and just throw it on to see how the CNC works with it. So me personally growing up, I always mentioned it in the way past videos, way back, way back, the main arcade game, when you talk arcade to me, the biggest game that comes to mind is The Simpsons Arcade. I remember going to Atlantic City with my family, long story short, I've said this story in the past. Went to Atlantic City to the casinos, I was too young, maybe like seven years old, eight years old with my brother and my sister, and we pumped quarters into The Simpsons game. Big blue cabinet, four players, and it's just such an iconic cabinet. I said, you know what, I'm going to build my first CNC cabinet based on the Konami style. So some people 
A lot of people do come from the RK 1UP world, so thank you for coming. Shout out to B Kong because a lot of you guys came through, so thank you for subscribing and all that. But some of you guys know that RK 1UP made a Simpsons cabinet. Yes, it's the three quarter scale. It's just an iconic cabinet though. A lot of people don't really understand why. If you do compare it to other cabinets, it's really just a different kind of style. Definitely from the head up here. The biggest thing that I do love about this cabinet, I'm gonna emphasize the word love, is the screen tilt. That is what makes it a Konami cabinet. If you do see like my other builds and you know Game Room Solutions cabinet, the TVs are really kind of vertical. This right here has got a beautiful tilt on it. That's really why I wanted to do this. The Konami cabinet is just an iconic tilt. It's, a, it's beautiful. So I said, you know what, my first cab, I'm gonna do a Konami style cabinet. So that's why I keep emphasizing it. The top of it here, literally from here, this is Konami dimensions. Or I should say outline. Dimensions though I modified. That's what's so cool about the CNC and the software that I use. An original Konami cabinet, I don't know exactly how deep it is, but including the four player deck, I needed like four sheets of four by eight wood. And I was like, no, that's not gonna happen because if I did want to resell this, I have to bring it down to kind of consumer market. So this right now, and again, I built this on like, what's the wording? Um, I do want to be cost effective. Uh, I only I built this using two and a half sheets of plywood. Um, my laminated birch, which I'm gonna go into. This is gonna be a long video. Get ready. Um, so with this though in mind, again, a four and a half, four by eight is maximum 48 inches. This cabinet right here, not including the control panel, but right here, this is 24 inches wide. So some people's doorways can only do 26, 30. A lot of my customers out in New York, when I do sell them the Game Room Solutions cabinet, it's a 30 inch deep, I should say, 30 inch deep cabinet with the control panel raised 33 inches if the control panel is down. This right now, I would say it's about 30 inches complete. So. I basically took a Konami cabinet and I sliced it to my dimensions needed. And I did make it fit for a 32 inch screen on this. So again, your standard Konami cabinet, I think it was holding an 18 inch screen or something like that. This is a little bit wider. So again, everything is modified, CNC talk. I'll go into another part of the video. I don't wanna bore you too much, but that is why I, I keep emphasizing Konami cabinet. It's really the outline of it, the side of it. Even the control panel, honestly, is almost like the Konami style. So that's why I keep emphasizing the Konami style cabinet. So I figured I'd throw you guys to the side of it just so you can really see this Konami outline to it. You'll definitely understand it better when you see the next cabinet, which is gonna be a dedicated Neo Geo cabinet, another iconic cabinet in my life. And that's honestly the last cabinet that I'll be replicating. I do know for a fact people saw pictures of this Konami cabinet and they definitely off the bat saw a couple of things way different than Game Room Solutions cabinets or the ones that I previously sold. Um, so definitely this will be, I feel like it's going to be hot. People are going to like this cabinet because of the size of it and then also again that, that screen tilt. Definitely where you're standing now, you'll, you should be able to tell why it's called a Konami cabinet. When I build the Neo Geo cabinet, you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about. I'm nerding out. but. You'll understand, trust me. So now while I was doing my research, and trust me, I was on the computer like day and night, just getting basic measurements down for an arcade cabinet, doing some research, I actually found somebody online by the name of Gozer. He actually went into a program which I use called SketchUp and made all the arcade cabinets you could think of. You, know, you want to talk about Neo Geo, you want to talk about Big Blue, all the cabinets you can think of, this guy basically sat and made SketchUp models of it. So shout out to him because I basically took his Konami, it was a generic Konami, he did have also a Simpsons Konami cabinet, but a generic Konami cabinet SketchUp program, or I should say file, DXF file, and I basically modified it. I cut it apart, I cut it into pieces, and I made this out of it. So shout out to Gozer for that. If you do a little bit of a search, if you know your arcade cabinets, you just kind of put in there, like for me, for the next one. If you put in Neo Geo RK Cabinet SketchUp, I guarantee you you're going to find this guy goes there and you're going to find all of it. Because Neo Geo, there's like eight different cabinets. Neo Geo, iconic cabinet, iconic system. He's got a one slot, two slot, three slot, four slot. Big one, it's massive, it's huge. 
So shout out again to Goza for just taking the time to make the model. I'm not ashamed to say it, I downloaded your model and then I cut it to bits and made it more practical, more consumer friendly. So now the last little piece to this big title, again, Super Mario Sticker Bomb Konami style dedicated Nintendo Switch streaming cabinet is the artwork. I already posted the promo video which went out today, this morning, yeah, today at three o'clock. Um, and I never usually do this. I usually shoot me talking and then I make the promo video in one night and edit it and all that and then send it out on two separate dates. This one, a little bit different. I posted the promo video and a lot of people were commenting on it so I shout out, you know, thank you guys for the comments. But I did get a couple of comments of like, whoa Vic, what did you do to the artwork? Like holy, sh you know, some somebody wrote jokingly, Goofy, it's all right, Goofy or, or Goofy. It's all right, but Goofy said, Vic, I'm gonna have a seizure looking at that. It's A-OK, -okay. Big Things Remember is my cabinet. I got to pick my artwork. But the reason why I chose this wild artwork is I wanted something different. I've done so many generic arcade builds for people. Trust me, I've done it. I've done Super Mario and I got Mario on this side and Luigi on this side and the, the mushroom. I've done it. I wanted something different. This is my cabinet, it is staying here. It will obviously go up for sale too on Facebook Marketplace, but for right now it is staying here. It is my cabinet and I wanted to do my own artwork. So I figured, hey, we're doing sticker bomb style on it. I'm gonna take this time now because we're talking about it, we're gonna talk about the artwork on it. So now almost like you do a lot of B-roll. B-roll is basically me right now, I'm talking and then it'll jump to kind of zoom in on the cabinet. If you do want a very big in-depth discussion of the artwork, literally looking at every single piece, check out the live stream that I did about a week ago. I actually pulled up the Photoshop file, I spoke for about an hour. It was to test out my live stream kind of capabilities, but I did go in depth on that. Back to the artwork. Basically again, I didn't want to do anything generic. I, I've, done, I've done the basics. I wanted to branch out and kind of make it my own unique thing. So. I've seen other builders do this sticker bomb style where they actually take physical stickers and they just put it everywhere on the cabinet, like sticker bomb it. You literally take 500 stickers and just throw it on the cabinet. Some people do make it look good, some people don't, meaning that they just throw random stickers, kind of like you went with you know, Rockstar stickers to video game stickers to, I don't know, uh, Kelly Clarkson stickers, I don't know, you know what I mean? It's like. For this right here, this is a dedicated Super Mario cabinet. So all the artwork on this is strictly Mario. And the best thing about it, Mario to me in, in the live stream, I kept pointing that way, and I'll show you guys now. I, I'm a big Mario fan, as you can see with my little kind of collection that I got going on here. Um, it's, it's just iconic, it is my first game ever. Again, I had an NES growing up, so I did have the original Mario Bros. Mario Bros. 2, Mario Bros. 3, it's, it's an iconic character. And even now at 31, it is still honestly my favorite character. It's the, it's the go-to game. If you're ever bored, you load up Mario because you can never get disappointed with Mario. So now I know what you're thinking. Vic, you made a dedicated Nintendo Switch cabinet. Why don't you do Nintendo Switch artwork? I honestly started with that. I made a red side and a blue side and I, I kicked it to the curb right away. Because honestly, for the Nintendo Switch, there's only two iconic games that I really love. Number one is Mario Odyssey. That's an, it's, it's a beautiful game. I love everything about Mario Odyssey. It's, it's, it's now. It's current gen. It's a, it's a great Mario game. And the other game is Luigi's Mansion. I love Luigi's Mansion from the GameCube. That is an iconic game. And there is obviously artwork on this cabinet dedicated also to Luigi's Mansion. But in all honesty, those are the only two games that I seriously love on the Switch. Yes, there is Super Smash Brothers. Yes, there is uh, Zelda. Me personally though, I'm not, a, I'm not a Smash Brothers fan. I'm not good at like fighters. Like I just, I just suck at them. Um, Kirby and Zelda, I never really played it. I'm 31 years old, I had an NES. I never played Zelda. I did give Zelda NES the, the original one, the first one to try. And I'll be honest, after an hour, I was like, this isn't for me. But somebody did mention that I should play the second one. So I'll probably do that on a live stream. So again, I was like, I'm not gonna make a cabinet based on Luigi's Mansion and Mario Odyssey. I said, let me bring it back to my favorite character, which is Mario. And again, I said, I didn't wanna do generic stuff because I've done so many Mario cabinets. 
This one had to be unique. So this right now, what you're looking at here is called Deviant Art. Deviant Art is basically a website that artists, anybody, artists goes and uploads their artwork. And I basically Deviant Art sticker bomb the hell out of this thing, and I think it looks amazing. So shout out to all the deviants that just do their thing with art because I can. If you saw my handwriting, it's my ten month old is, has better handwriting than me. <laughs> So again, when I was like thinking about Mario games, I was like, which one is my favorite? And honestly, all the Mario games are my favorite. You gotta think, um, from when the NES came out, I mean, again, I was born in 1990, so I, I had an NES, but it didn't come out on 1990, it came out like 80, 87, 85. And Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3, so original Mario Bros. 2 and 3 are iconic to me, because that's, that's childhood. So I was like, all right, maybe I'll do one panel of Mario Bros. 2, one panel of Mario 3, but then I said to myself, I said, wait, Mario 64 is iconic, Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Sunshine. I was like, I want all the Marios. And then I said, you know what? I did some research on this Deviant Art website, and there's just so many renditions of artwork. I just said, you know what? I need them all. I, I literally downloaded like 400 separate images, and I was like, I need them all in this cabinet. That's where I basically concluded this whole sticker bomb style, where I took a ton of images and I Threw it on. My knees hurt. So what's really cool again is like I did there's a lot of artwork. What's also cool, like you do have like memes, like you just have some collaborations, you have people took their own take on games, and again, like I said, everything about this cabinet is super unique. I'll break it down real quick, but again, if you check out my live stream I did, I literally broke down every little bit. So let's start first because I'm down here because my knees hurt. Um, we'll start with the kick plate here. So we'll start from the bottom up with the actual kick plate. As you can see, like three big images, just basic stuff. Mario, you got Bowser, you got Toadette, you got Yoshi. Again, some people have their own cool renditions. In the middle of the cabin, I do have all the systems that I had, which is the 8-bit gaming, 16-bit gaming, and the 64-bit. So you got the NES, the Super NES, and the N64. It's a pretty cool thing. Again, somebody, this is actually a t-shirt design. They didn't have like a GameCube one and all that, but it's definitely an iconic piece. Then up above, you do have a couple of memes. You do see like Luigi's Mansion here. I was laughing at this with like Mario doesn't have enough stars from N64 Mario, Mario 64, to go use the bathroom. Look at this like Mario Odyssey. Somebody basically took Mario Bros. 3 art box and made a Mario Odyssey kind of box to it. I thought it was cool. You got iconic Luigi's Mansion. You got Mario in a boot. It's just, it's just amazing, and also this is probably my favorite piece, which is the 8-bit Mario 64 Mario throwing Bowser off the first Bowser level where he says the iconic and they removed it so long day Bowser. So again, it's just, it's just cool. When you look at the kick plate, again, every piece here is just super unique. So now when I was doing the artwork, I actually started on the right side because I knew this cabinet was going to stay here, and when you come down the stairs, this is the first side you see. So I started out with this side here. And again, I aim for iconic, iconic stuff. I think for this one, we'll go from the top down. Bring it back again, Mario 64. You got the iconic stage where Mario had to chase the rabbit. I, that was like super important for me to have that. It's a beautiful, number one, it's a beautiful piece of art. Whoever made that, amazing. But it's also an iconic stage in that game. Then you got a Retro Gamer. I figured that was cool because you do have the three Marios going along here. You do have like a Mario sprite of Galaxy, which again, it's pretty cool that these people took a current, not current gen, but a 3D game from the Wii, Mario Galaxy, and somebody made it 8-bit. I thought that was cool. You got Luigi's Mansion. I love this artist's rendition. It's iconic. Luigi's Mansion again, Mario. Great game, and I just love what they did with this. You do have even like the Shy Guy. You got the Chain Chomp here. You even have like the Goomba wearing the Mario hat, so that's a Mario Odyssey reference. But big, and I mean big, is the Super Mario Bros. 3 box art. That was like a huge deal. I saw that and I was like, you know what? I need this. This is an icon. This right here, this is just iconic. Me personally, when you think Mario, that's the picture you see. You see this Mario most of the time, if not all the time. So just want an iconic Super Mario Bros. 3 on that. You even have like the sprite of uh, Super Mario Sunshine, as you can see. Then going down, you can see like, this is a cool version of a sticker bomb. 
basically took the bad guys, put the white outline to give it the actual effect of a sticker. And again, you have people like the map here, uh, again, NES, uh, Mario Bros. 2 style map on it. Then you got like all different renditions of the Marios. You even have like the Duck Hunt Dog, you got the Goomba Stack. But I definitely love this bottom right corner here. Look at that, you have Luigi's Mansion in virtual boy style artwork. And I just love this whole DK retro on the skyscraper, Empire State Building, you got Mario on the plane. That just, that was just beautiful. That's just retro, I love everything about it. Now on the opposite side, same thing. A lot of deviants, a lot of renditions, pretty cool. We'll start from the top down. Grand Theft Auto is a great game, so check out like somebody made their own rendition of Grand Theft Mario. I thought it was genius, I thought it was awesome because you got three characters, you even got Wario, you got Luigi, you got Princess Peach, like the hot girl in the bikini type Grand Theft Auto thing. Super Drogo was pretty funny, it was off of a t-shirt. Look at that piranha plant, like I love how the piranha plant is. You even have like the Luigi's Mansion dog looking like Ghostbusters. I'm not a sneakerhead, you got Mario Jumpman Jordan style. This is pretty funny where instead of Pac-Man, it's Chain Chomp, this little Donkey Kong holding up Mario, like Lion King reference. This was awesome, I had to make this big, which is the Godfather reference with Mario. I thought that was genius. Then going down, it's kind of just, you know, again, basic stuff, iconic scenes. You got Raccoon Mario, again, Sticker Bomb. You got Ninja Turtles and Bowser. Look at this flaming boo, I loved everything about it. I did mention in the stream about this section here, which is the iconic snow level on Mario 64 with the penguin, where you gotta bring the baby penguin to the mom. Some people, I'm pretty sure everybody has thrown that penguin off the ledge. <laughs> but on the bottom right, you could see even Mario Odyssey reference. And look at that, that's the best part also, the piano from Mario 64. So you might be able to say that there is a lot of Mario 64 reference, even like the Cuphead Mario. Then the last little bit real quick we'll talk about is the control panel, the marquee, and this right here, which a lot of people are noticing, is artwork on the speaker panel. I'm so happy with that, I'll end with that. We'll look at the control panel real quick. Kind of basic, because I did want to also see if my CNC machine could understand, you know, if I wanted to make specific button artwork, meaning like the hole cut out. So I kind of just sticker bomb this as well, uh, just to kind of test it for the first time. But as you can see, basic stuff, you got big group picture in the middle, then you got some memes, you got like Luigi's Mansion, Bullet Bill, uh, Surplus was a t-shirt thing, um, Little Island on the left. On the right side, you got Plumber, that's like the Pringles logo. You got Mario, uh, Luigi's Mansion um, 3, kind of 8-bit style, and then another kind of Ninja Turtle reference. So now the real last piece of artwork I did was the marquee for this build. And I said to myself, I was like, let me calm down on the marquee. I didn't want to sticker bomb it because the cabinet already has a ton of artwork. And if I did sticker bomb this, I think it would have killed the vibe of the cabinet. So I said to myself, I was like, let's, let's do something calm. Definitely want to throw like a generic Mario star up there, little Mario family picture. But I was like, I'm missing a game. And again, me, I did have a Super Nintendo and I'm pretty sure everybody that had a Super Nintendo had a copy of Super Mario All-Stars. And if you look carefully, I have no All-Star artwork at all. And what's iconic with the All-Star game is when you load it up, it's just dark, you hear a bunch of mumbling from all the characters, and like the piano plays and boom, you're just hit with the Super Mario All-Star logo with the whole cast. And I was like, you know what, let me throw on the All-Stars logo, because if you really think about it, the all Super Mario All-Stars game had like five Mario games in it, the all-time best Mario games. And I was like, you know what? I have the all-time, all Mario games. Why not just throw up the Super Mario All-Stars logo? Because this is this is just a Mario All-Star cabinet. So that's why I did that. And I, did, I think I did a good call on keeping the marquee calm. Last thing, which was pretty cool, which is a coincidence that I had to do it, but yes, I did put artwork on the speaker grill. So my CNC did a beautiful cut job on the speakers. It, I was very shocked by it. I think I did too many holes. And honestly, cutting the vinyl for this was a pain in the butt, but I did a pretty good job. The real reason I have this here is because playing with my Z-axis on my CNC machine, it actually has like a little bit of a groove, like it cut a groove 
where the holes are. Um, and it, it wasn't clean. It wasn't like a clean cut. So I said, you know what? Instead of me spray painting it black, let me just vinyl wrap it. So that's honestly why I did it. And I did it kind of retro. Left side, you do have your Chain Chomp Pac-Man. Right side, you do have old school Donkey Kong and you do also have Space Invaders with a Mario kind of outline to it. And then in the middle, I thought this was so cool. It spells out love with the Zapper, the Wiimote and the N64 controller. I thought that was pretty unique. And then at the bottom of it is just kind of somebody's own rendition of Mario and Peach and Bowser. So that's the story with the speaker group. So now coming back real quick because I forgot to mention you guys, I already showered. Um, but I made the final decision that I will always be using the laminated birch from this point on. This cabinet, I did use the black laminated birch. As you can see, it is just beautiful and clean. Yes, I do spend a little bit more money compared to regular birch, but it saved me a ton of time. And not to mention, I, I didn't have to buy pi uh, primer, and I didn't have to buy, I didn't have to sand, I didn't have to paint sand, paint sand like I did with George's V-Pin. So from this point on, all my cabinets will be built with laminated birch. All right, so real quick, let's talk vendors on this because Again, I cut the cabinet, but there are definitely a couple of vendors to point out because some people might know the vendors. Big thing real quick, I finally was able to join in on this ability, Angel. This is his marquee. He printed the marquee for me. It is a beautiful marquee. It's, be it's printed beautifully. I, again, I basically sent him the artwork, custom dimensions on it, and he printed it for me. And I want to start with this because it's pretty funny because when I sent the artwork to Angel, Angel's like, dude, this is like plain. Like, are you sure you want this? And I was like, Angel, trust me, bro. If you see the cabinet, you'll understand why. So he's like, Vic, send me the dimensions. He added about a quarter of an inch for bleed. I was able to cut and there you go. So this ability with the marquee print. So shout out to Angel for that. Big shout out to Gulf Coast decals. They're, they're my go-to. That's, I'm, I'm already claiming it. They are gonna be printing all of my vinyl for all the builds. Again, if it wasn't a Game Room Solutions cabinet, I am using this. You could easily tell off the bat, just the gloss off of this, and again, I've always used Gulf Coast decals on my pinball machines, and I've done it on a couple of arcade cabinets. The base thing you could tell from that print though, it's just, you could see that gloss. That gloss, that is just beautiful, high quality print. And what's also cool with them, and uh, this goes out to Justin, because I guess he's the owner, he's really the one that answers all the emails and everybody knows Justin. I sent all the artwork to Justin, and I said to him, I said, you know, here's the dimensions and all that. I know what it costs for a pinball machine. This obviously does have more artwork than a pinball machine. Um, so just throwing it out there, like I said about my speaker panel mishap with the CNC machine, I just threw in this extra piece. It's 29 inches by, I believe it's 17 inches, 29 by 17. And uh, I was expecting to pay a lot. And honestly, it, it really wasn't much. But the real big shout out to Justin, I gotta tell him, is the control pad. I send him the artwork. I send him, basically every time I send artwork, I, I label it left side, right side, um, kick plate. I wrote speaker panel and I wrote control panel. And without me asking, Justin's like, Vic, you have a control panel. We're going to do this kind of tougher textured vinyl uh, laminate. And I was like, okay, uh, that's cool. And he's like, Vic, you don't even need plexi for it. It won't come off. I was like, whoa, you got me at no plexi because honestly, my CNC machine still working on it. It didn't cut plexi good, especially the circles. Um, so he's like, Vic, you don't even need plexi. So he sent me this control panel and you could just see the actual texture of it. It is beautiful. If you guys remember that four player cabinet I found on Facebook Marketplace, it is this type of texture. And you didn't need a you didn't need Plexi for that panel, and I didn't need Plexi for this panel. So just kind of a shout out to Justin to just recommend this type of texture. And he didn't charge me for it. I figured it was like an add-on. He didn't charge me for it, and I was like, I was just grateful for it because I, I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is like more work to print. He's like, no Vic, trust me, you're gonna want this. So now that he did it, now I know to always ask for this textured control panel because I don't need Plexi for it, it's beautiful. This is awkward. <laughs> Next up on the vendor list though is Groovy Game Gear. I did so much research and I knew for a fact that when I was building this cabinet, 
I wanted to try out these Eclipse buttons. I've seen Eclipse, Eclipse buttons on people's cabinets and I was like, I gotta try it. So I did my research. Groovy Game Gear was the cheapest when it came to the Eclipse buttons. So Groovy Game Gear, no hookups. I paid just like what you would pay, but I basically got the Eclipse buttons from them and also the T-molding from them. It came out way cheaper than going to any other site. I believe you do pay like $10 for shipping or 15 bucks for shipping, but it still came out cheaper than anybody that I could relate to. The only big thing I have to note is that when it came to the Eclipse, now that I see it, these are actually yellow for coin, or I should say like the minus on the Nintendo Switch controller. They are more of an orange hue. Not a deal breaker, not a killer, but just to kind of note that it was yellow on the ad, but it was orange. So that's the only thing. The last thing to mention is um, Paradise Arcade Shop for the joysticks. Got Sanwa joysticks on this eight ways, and I wanted to try it. I'm pretty pleased with them. Only one little downside is that they are skinny, but I do have aluminum bat tops on this with the extender. Um, only because I didn't kind of route out the joystick correctly, but these basically are aluminum bat top You could even see by the actual color hue on it. It's awesome And then I got from Amazon this kind of extender piece. They're pretty cool. They are labeled as skinny aluminum bat tops I probably won't do them again They're skinny. That's just the thing to note. Uh, I wish they were kind of bigger I'm, I'm used to the regular bat tops that I normally get but these are skinny, but definitely the aluminum look, it's, it's pretty pristine looking, it's, it's awesome. So now real quick to finalize it, as far as the T-molding and the button color options, if you notice real carefully, I basically did it like Mario. Mario's got red top, so we got red on top for the T-molding, and it's got blue pants, so I do have blue on the bottom here. Same thing with the button layout, red top, blue pants, figured red joystick, blue joystick, so that's my design. So now let me tell you about one big challenge that I had and that was finding encoders for this to work with the switch Many people with the RK one ups you guys do have the Intech board I didn't want to do that because number one. It's 130 bucks. Yes, you do get buttons Yes, you do get joysticks with that, but let's be real you have to swap those out anyway 130 bucks for an encoder which is too expensive What I learned from again like mentioned earlier was retro Ralph's video where the gentleman said I have the encoders that work with the Switch, but games like Super Smash Bros, it won't really, it won't work or move the character using the D-pad. You need to use the analog stick. That means you need an encoder that could swap between D-pad and analog. And goodness, thank goodness I read it. I ordered, and I'm gonna show you everything right now. I ordered the Amazon kit that he mentioned that he did buy, which is the SJXJ encoders. Doing my research, you could read in the comments on Amazon. People were able to make the D-pad to analog switch work. And I do have it working on this cabinet. The only thing is that you did need to download a firmware update, connect the encoders to your PC, launch this executable program, which looks kind of sketchy. It's just an EXE file. A bar loads and it's done. I took the risk. I downloaded it. I updated the encoder. And yes, my buttons do D-pad to analog swap. So D-pad to X input is what I should say. Now again, because we're talking about the buttons and all that, I do have eight buttons here, and obviously the Nintendo Switch has eight buttons on it. You got X, Y, B, A, L1, L, L1, R1, L, Z, R, Z, which is L1 and L2, really. So you do have eight buttons. Up top, my white button is the plus, the yellow button is the minus, the green button is the D-pad to analog switch. And then in the middle, I have the home button and again, the capture button, just because I had four button, I made four holes. So yes, this does work great with the Nintendo Switch. So now let me tell you the one little downside to running this update to the encoder. When I first got the encoder, I put it to the switch, it worked, I was able to play Ultra Street Fighter 2 without needing this whole D-pad to analog swap and all that. And while I was testing it, I put the switch to sleep, like to sleep mode, and I was able to push a button on the actual arcade stick or the arcade button to wake up the switch. Now, unfortunately, after that update, I cannot wake up the switch 
with the arcade sticks. I have now the LED set to fade. Obviously my buttons now fade, you know me. So that's like a one little downside to this whole project. It's not a deal breaker, but in all honesty for me, I do have a back panel, a very big back door on this, but for right now I do have the control panel loose because I do want to show you the encoder. But basically if the Nintendo Switch goes to sleep, I would either open up the back door or I could pull out the control panel and I would have to actually wake the Nintendo Switch. I'm gonna do it right now, just for kicks. So I put the, the Switch to sleep right now, and I'm gonna bring you in to show you the Switch, so no worries. The, right now the Nintendo Switch is asleep. And again, before I ran the update, I was able to push like start or move the joysticks, and as you can see right now, nothing. Nothing happened. I have to either go through the back door, which is what I will do, but for right now I have the control panel here. I'm gonna wake up the switch, and once the switch wakes up, I will then move joystick one, which sometimes doesn't recognize, but joystick two does recognize it. And as you can see now though, joystick one does work. So that is the one little thing, and I'll bring you in closer, because as I move joystick one, it's recognizing it as player two, Joystick two is recognizing it as player one. Basically, you just go in and you could do a change grip order, change it, change it, done. Now I'm back to player one. Some people might find it as a nuisance, but in all honesty, it's only once you turn the, the, the game on. Once you turn the, system, the switch on, you have to do this little thing. It's not that big of a deal, but it is something that I do wanna point out in case you are looking at these encoders. So now again, just to show you, pulling off the control panel, I have enough slack to work around, I do have LEDs on my control panel. I do have a quick disconnect here. So in case I ever want to take the actual panel out, I can do that. Encoders are with USBs, so there is USBs and I'll show you the switch. But as you can see, there's one SJXJ encoder and then player two is here. So as you can see, I do have to clean up the wiring, can't lie to you. But that's the only one thing I noticed. So again, if I put the switch to sleep and I could use the arcade sticks to put it to sleep on the screen, It'll go to sleep, but I can't wake it up. If I wake up the switch, you might see the encoders turn on. See, they turn on real quick, but then it's like if I move the joystick, I have one connection here, that worked. And if I go here, that works. So now that the switch is awake, it does work. And as you can see now, player one actually launched it. Well, you can't see it, but player one launched it. Yep. So now real quick, just taking a look at the inside of the cabin, I'll move the control panel. There's the Nintendo Switch docked. And yes, instead of me opening up the control panel, I could remove the Joy-Cons, but I figure after two or three days, the Joy-Cons need to be charged, so you do have to connect to the Switch. On the left side there, you could see the two USBs that's going to the encoder. The right side here, again, this is a streaming ca cabinet. I do have an HDMI one in to two out split, and I do have my ethernet to USB here. I do also have a Z313 here, so I do have a subwoofer at the bottom. You can see it there, and I have the wheel right there. So it's a very easy, I'm doing this one-handed because I'm holding the panel, but I could basically scroll the wheel with the control panel on. Now the only quick note to note about the speakers is if you do have the auxiliary wire connected to the switch, which is right above, to use the speakers, you have to connect the auxiliary switch or wire, I should say. The only downside is that, again, I'm gonna be streaming. When I connect the auxiliary wire to the switch, HDMI audio no longer is there. So basically for me, while I do the stream, I'm going to stream off, I mean, for me personally, I'm gonna be using the TV speakers. But so far when I've been playing alone, I just connect the speakers to the Z313. Now just real quick to show you, on the bottom here, you have the wheel. Awesome. So now the last thing to talk about is again, this cabin is meant to stream. So I'm gonna push this a little bit close. I'm exaggerating the push, but basically I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna be able to stream with this. So you can see real quick the rear of this cabinet. Again, always using the kind of switch for the power. On the right side here though, I do have, I know it's ghetto, but not everybody's gonna use this for streaming. I do have my HDMI connection, 
And I have my ethernet connection because downloading games from tinfoil, I always get faster connection hardwired. So I could pull HDMI out and then by my streaming PC, I do have my HDMI cable here. And all I gotta do is basically connect it just like that. Once I have it connected here, I have it on my main display and I have it on OBS. So again, anything that I do on the cabinet here shows up on my stream. So that's how I have it set up for streaming. And again, like I said, games that I want to play on the switch, if I can't get it to sh meaning if I can't get the game to play with the arcade sticks, I could always sit at my chair and play with the joy cons. That's honestly the streaming setup. I'll push the cabinet back and I'll have my own camera on me. I'm going to have actually two cameras, one on my face and one on the controls. So now one comment to note, cause I know somebody is on their keyboard getting ready to troll me. Hey Vic, how do you turn the cabinet off? Do you unplug it? No, this cabinet is actually going to stay plugged in because again, somebody's going to write on the keyboard, the Nintendo switch is inside of this. And if I pull the plug, that means that the Nintendo switch is no longer charging. And again, I do have a modded switch and we all know what happens when a modded switch reaches zero, you have to take it out and connect it to a computer. So for me, when I do want to basically go to bed at night, if I'm done playing, I'll put this switch to sleep. I will then take my little LED controller. I'll turn off the LEDs and I got Velcro up top and I'll turn off my TV. And that is how I'll turn off the cabinet. <laughs> So I already know, oh Vic, you can't unplug it. I know this will just stay plugged in and got to keep the Nintendo switch charged. So the one last thing I did want to mention, I, I threw the lights off so you could see like the glow to it. Obviously again, LED out buttons set to the R channel. So when it fades, you can see the buttons fade in and out. But on this cabinet is the first time ever. And I never really understood why, but I am running a 32 inch TL, no TCL, TLC, TCL, 1080p TV on this one. Um, on my other builds, like for people that have Pandora's boxes and Raspberry Pis, I've always used the standard 32 inch 720p TVs. And I couldn't, I, I went to Best Buy and I'm like, why aren't these TVs like 1080p? Like in all honesty, like 1080p is like now, like that's like the norm. Like I was shocked to understand and see that basically Majority of 32 inch TVs, TVs, not monitors, please. TVs are 720p. At Best Buy, there was only two 32 inch TVs that had 1080p. This TCL was the cheapest at about 160 bucks. Then they had a Samsung that was like 250. And I guess it was like QLED technology. And I was like, no. But knowing that I was doing a Nintendo Switch on this, I had to pay the extra money and get the 1080p monitor. And in all honesty, I am very happy that I went with the 1080p monitor because game just looks so beautiful. I discovered on my live stream that on the actual Nintendo switch, like screen, the handheld screen that only outputs 720p. And I'm like, damn, that, that sucks. And I even, I, I could be wrong, but I understood that the OLED is also 720p. So, Unless you're docked, you will get the true 1080p. No, your Nintendo Switch cannot output 4K. Please, no, it, it won't. Unless you're using Yuzu PC emulation, this will not output 4K. But I'm guessing from there you can see it's just, it's a beautiful screen. It's, it's gorgeous. I was honestly playing a little bit of um, uh, Grand Theft Auto. I was playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City on this. I'll launch it real quick. And I was just shocked at how ugly graphically it is ugly in 1080p i've played it on 1440 p at 144 hertz at 1080p 60 hertz gta vice all the gta's are just they're not they're not that good looking they're, they're god awful um i would think that honestly a ps2 graphically was a lot better than this um let me see how it looks on the camera i'll take you guys closer it doesn't look that bad But this is also one of the reasons why I want to do the stream. Just like, it doesn't look good. Like, look at Tommy Versetti. I played this on the PC and I guess it's because of the PC, but it, it just doesn't look good. How does it look on the camera? 
Yeah, no, like Tommy Rossetti is just like, no, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't really look good. Imagine playing it on the screen. So another thing why I want to do the stream is because there are people that ask me, especially for hyperspin builds, they go, hey Vic, I want a dedicated Grand Theft Auto cabinet. Can I play Grand Theft Auto on the arcade sticks? And it's just going to be one of those things that in this situation, oh, oh what? I drove away. <laughs> in this situation, I could play GTA on arcade sticks, but I don't think you're going to have fun. <laughs> So this is one of those games where, yes, you could play with the arcade sticks. Should it be played with the arcade sticks? It's going to be a hard no on this, but yeah, just GTA on this is, it wasn't that great, especially on a 1080p TV. I was kind of shocked with it. So now real quick, I'll just show you playing two players on Street Fighter. Of course, we'll do some Ryu and Ken. So as you can see, up, down, left, right, punch, punch, punch. And I'm gonna make a quick note about the Intec board, but I could throw a Hadouken and all that. So as you can see, and again, the point of the stream is to see what games you could play with arcade sticks. So for example, I could play this game with arcade sticks, and obviously this is an arcade classic fighter. It will definitely work with arcade sticks. Now real quick, I do wanna mention on that note, yes, Ultimate Street Fighter 2, you could play with the arcade sticks. It's a thumbs up on that. So that's the idea of the stream. So now real quick, I want to make a comment about the Intec board. And I don't know, I, I wired my board according to the Intec board. I played Street Fighter on it, and then I had to rewire it. I'm going to throw a picture of the Intec board right now on the screen and check it out. Maybe you could spot it. Take a look real quick at the top right two buttons and the bottom right two buttons. So we have Y, X, R, L, B, A, Z, R, Z, L. Playing Street Fighter with that button layout is incorrect. It should be, and this is how I have my panel wired, it is wired Y, X, L1, L2, or Z, L, B, A, R1, R2, or Z, R. Okay, that is the correct way to play it. When I did the Intec wiring on my panel, I played Street Fighter, I had low punch, medium punch, and then hard kick. And I was like, whoa, that's not, that's not right. And then not to mention hard punch was number four, the top bro last button. And I was like, you're not gonna play Street Fighter like that. That's, that's not right. So maybe other games it works good like that, but off the bat, you cannot play Street Fighter with that button layout, it, it didn't work. So I just wanna make that quick comment on the Intec board compared to what I did. In my book, the Intec board is wired wrong. So now real quick, just to show you guys, I do have this capture button. So as you can see, capture taken. So on the actual Joy-Cons, there is a switch uh, capture picture button you could take. And I have the home button. So here, from here, I could press Y, and I could close out Ultra Street Fighter, and I'm gonna launch Super Smash Bros. I need an update. <laughs> I'm gonna launch Super Smash Bros, and I'm gonna just show you guys the D input and the X input and all that. Now again, keep in mind, yes, with the stream, I hope you guys join in on it. I do have a modded switch. Take with that info what that means. I do dub it as the ultimate handheld, um, so yes, you will see many games on my stream because I'll be able to have them and download them and all that. So uh, just keep that in mind. I did notice that there's a lot of like arcade style games on the Switch. Like I have something here called Hammer Kid. Looks like an arcade style game. You'll definitely see it in the stream and we'll see, is it worth calling, um, you know, is it worth noting as a actual arcade game? So now we're done here. I just want to play. So I'll press A on it. Again, I can move around and I'm going to do two players on this. It does get some taking used to, but basically my enter is the bottom row, second button. So I could use Mario. I want to bring in player two. I'll use Yoshi or Samus, don't matter. Also note 32 inch TV, 1080p on this. So just real quick, we're gonna see right now. 
Mario's on that side, I'm able to move. Samus, I'm able to move, awesome. So what that guy on Retro Ralph was witnessing was that when he moved, the characters would actually just taunt. And if you look carefully, my green buttons here is the D input to X input. So if I'm right now, see I'm stuck taunting, if I press the green button, I'm back. So that was the, one of the biggest things needed when it came to the encoders, is that you want something that could do this D, D input to X input. That is a very big deal, as you can see. I can't move Mario until I press the green button. I could move Mario around. So that is a very big deal. And honestly, there you guys have it. That is the most, oh no. I'm gonna do one more thing just to show you guys. Cause some people might be saying, hey Vic, you have like Mario Bros 2 and 3 on this. How do you wanna play it? Again, with my situation, I do have a modded switch. And with that modded switch comes RetroArch. And I am able to launch, I do have 9,000 retro games from arcade to Super Nintendo, the NES, the Game Boys. So if I ever wanted to branch away from Switch games and just play some classic retro stuff, I could do that. So now that it's loaded, again, I have MAME Arcade, I got Game Boy, SNES. So if I go back to my history real quick, and just to kind of finalize it, because this is just a beautiful sound, I'm gonna bump up the volume on my TV. We're gonna run this. Just, this is iconic, just, just listen. Boom. That is it. <laughs> And it's also awesome. if I can exit out, I'll be able to exit my emulation and run another game. Like I said, this Hammergate game, we'll definitely check it out in a stream. It does have arcade retro vibes to it. And again, that's the point of the stream is to see if you could play this with arcade sticks. Awesome. There you guys have it, Big BP Game Case Arcades. The dedicated Nintendo Switch streaming cabinet, Super Mario, sticker bomb, Konami style cabinet.